Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyberkin Productions. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Unit 1971 The Claws of Axos set. So let's jump into it. Starting off with the box it has the same colour scheme as previous B&M sets with the blue covering the majority of the box with the white for text. The art style is also the same with a picture of the TARDIS and Gallifrey text on different segments of the box. The Doctor Who logo is shown at the top, Unit 1971 The Claws of Axos at the bottom and some text in a red box states they're in 5 inch range and part of the collector series. A large window covers the front of the box then spills over to the right side to get a better view of the figures. Also on the window is the limited edition sticker which I've always found to be pointless. The left side of the box is the picture of the TARDIS and the right side is plain aside from the bubble of text telling you the set includes the Brigadier, Sergeant John Benton and Captain Mike Yates. The back features pictures of the figures in the set with their names underneath them. The rest is repeated information aside from some legal gobbledygook in the bottom right. The top has more repeated information, apart from the added character options website URL, and the bottom just features a ton of legal gobbledygook. Now with the box out of the way, let's take a look at the figures. So here they are, Sergeant Benton, the Brigadier, and Captain Yates. And I have to say, they look amazing. The body for Benton and Yates seems to be a complete reuse of the Brigadier from the Three Doctors set, but repainted and the new soldier vest on the torso. This really works for the figures so I'm completely okay with this. Let's put the Brigadier and Captain Yates aside and get a better in-depth look at Sergeant Benton. Starting off with a tan unit beret, you can see the classic unit logo on the front with the black rim at the edge of the beret. It features some brilliant sculpting detail with the beret drooping to one side. Some hair can be seen underneath the beret which features sculpted detail for the strands of hair. The face sculpt for Sergeant Benton is very good, it really captures the look of John Levine. The paint detail for the eyes, eyebrows and mouth is good and very sharp. The green soldier vest on the torso is made from a thin plastic, which in turn has given it a very cheap feel. The detail however is incredible across the piece, with his collar being open showing the dark green scarf underneath, the button join going down the middle with the buttons on top, the various pockets, the belt that connects to the bags at the bottom, which themselves feature some very good sculpted detail. The straps that go from the bags to his back, where it connects back to the belt. There's even some light grey paint apps applied to it to represent quarry dust from the episode. I have to say, I really like this piece. It's definitely one of the best brand new pieces that character have made in a long time. His arms are covered by a green jacket, which features some creasing and wrinkling effect. The unit logo can be seen on his left arm, with the sergeant symbol on both arms as well. His hands are covered by brown gloves that feature some very good sculpted detail for his individual fingers and thumbs. His green trousers feature some creasing and wrinkling effect that stops above his black boots that feature some light sculpted detail for the laces and patterns and some paint detail to make them look dirty. There's also some legal gobbledygook under his boots. Sergeant Benton comes with an accessory which is a black assault rifle. This gun is a reuse of the mold for Captain Tom Ryan's weapon from Primeval, but this is fine as the guns are easily universal. It features some really good sculpting detail including the stock, scope, magazine and barrel. The gun can be placed into the figure's right hand where it is held very securely. Moving to Captain Yates, he is mostly identical to Benton but with some slight differences. The hair is a lighter brown with sculpting detail to show the strands of hair. The face sculpt is actually not that, ugh, who am I kidding, this is terrible. It looks absolutely nothing like Richard Franklin. This is by far the worst face sculpt of any Doctor Who figure I've seen. I even think this is worse than the 12th Doctor figures. Come on character, you can do better than this. The straps, belt and bags are light green compared to dark green on Benton. The sergeant symbol has been removed from the arms but some light grey paint apps have been applied instead. The trousers and boots also feature some light grey paint apps applied to them as well. Captain Yates also comes with the same accessory as Benton and can be placed into his right hand where it is held very securely. Moving on we have the Brigadier, which is a re-release of the Brigadier from the Claws of Axos set. The differences being different coloured beret, hair, skin, face detail, jumper, gloves, trousers and the boots. The Brigadier is partly identical to Benton and Yates, so we'll skip over a lot of him. The hair can be seen under the beret, which looks quite bland as you can barely make out any sculpting detail at all. The face sculpt is brilliant and really captures the look of Nicholas Courtney. The paint detail for the eyes, eyebrows, moustache and mouth is very good and sharp. His white shirt can be seen under his military jumper which features some excellent sculpted detail to represent the lines of the fabric. 
Light tan green patches can be seen on his shoulders and elbows, with the shoulder patches featuring some paint detail for some badges. The belt goes around the stomach with a gun holster on the side. The arms feature more of the jumper detail with cuffs at the end. The rest of the Brigadier is identical to Benton and Yates, aside from the trousers featuring some dark brown paint apps to make them look dirty. The Brigadier comes with a black pistol accessory which features some really good detail for its small size. The pistol can be held in the figure's right hand where it's held very securely. Turning to articulation, all figures almost feature the same degree of movement. The heads on Benton and Yates can turn but is hindered by the collar while the Brigadiers can turn 360 degrees. Their arms can pull out 90 degrees, the shoulder can turn 360 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow and a 360 degree twist on the wrist. They all feature a 360 degree waist joint. Their legs can be spread out but are hindered by the jumper slash vest. They can kick out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg and a final 90 degree bend on the knee. So they all feature some really good articulation. As you can see in the size comparison, they don't look out of place when put with other figures, especially ones from the same story. So overall, what do I think of this set? I actually really like it. It's great that they re-released this Brigadier, as the old Claws of Axos set is very difficult to get these days. It's also great to finally get Benton and Yates, who are some very iconic characters from the classic series. They really surprised me with the military vest, as it looks fantastic. The head sculpt for Benton was brilliant, but the head sculpt for Yates was pretty disappointing. The main problem with this set is the fact it's a B&M exclusive, as fans struggle to get the sets due to scalpers buying them up and selling for ridiculous prices. So that concludes this review. If you liked it, please leave a like and tell me what you think in the comments below. If you enjoy Doctor Who content and also subscribe to not miss any more figure reviews, as well as the Doctor Who fan series that is currently in production. Thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again, goodbye.